If you're still on the field, I say hallelujah. I say if you are still on the field, somebody shout hallelujah. Once again, you are welcome to the festival of glory. Please make your neighbor welcome as you grab your seat. It is the first night, but it will be a glorious night. Turn your Bible, if you have one, to the book of Acts, chapter 26, beginning from verse number 12. And what we have there is what I call a glorious introduction. A glorious introduction. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. This was a glorious introduction. A setting functionary of the Sanhedrin equipped with the authority of the Jewish ruling council. He had secured letters from Jerusalem to do damage to everyone that he found that was off the way. And as he was going with the authority that was given to him by the chief priest, he told this story about an encounter that he had. An encounter with the glory of God. And Jesus himself, in all of his splendor, in all of his majesty, decided to introduce himself to him. He fell from his horseback and he cried, Who are you, Lord? Somebody on this field tonight, Jesus wants to introduce himself to you and his introduction will come with power, it will come with glory. He will make himself known according to the measure of his majesty. Today we'll go down on record and somebody on this field will be able to say this is where it all began. In the moment of time I would like you to rise on your feet as we bring to the microphone an evangelist, a laborer in the kingdom of God, someone that has carried the burden of soul winning for so many years, through his lips tonight, Jesus will make an introduction. Makodi, with a clap innovation, with a stand innovation, we want to bring to the microphone tonight Evangelist Sunday Oguche. Please celebrate the Lord for this great vessel of his kingdom. Help me celebrate the apostle. Apostle to the nations. Is that all you can do? Help me also celebrate several of our fathers on ground. Uncle Tauja, uh, Pastor Chinjele and the wife and several others. Help me celebrate them. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.
We have come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Hey, hey. We have come to draw, draw, draw. Draw from you again. Hey, hey, we've come to draw. Draw from you again. We've come to draw, we've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Hey, we've come to draw, 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 draw. Draw from you again. Yeah. We've come to draw. We've come to draw. We've come to draw. Exhaustive God, the Almighty, we have come to recover that which we lost. We have come to recover that which the wicked ones. to every cry in the name of Jesus. Show us the path to recovery. Cause us to recover. On site, online, online, let there be recovery in the name of Jesus. Lift your two hands up. There are several cries for recovery that has reached the Lord. The Lord showed to me these 27 individuals. He said he was going to grant them recovery very sharply before I preach.
Father, where are those 27 individuals whose cry has touched you? Who came yearning for recovery? Locate them right now. Wherever they, wherever they are, let their recovery begin. Now! Yes, receive recovery. Receive recovery. Receive recovery. Receive recovery. Receive recovery. Wherever you are, everywhere, wherever you are, everywhere. Now! Recovery! 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 Now! In the name of Jesus! Recovery is going on. Recovery is going on. Many that have become naked have been clothed again with dignity and glory. Every one of them, Lord, cause it to be so. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Sit down and follow me on your journey. Tonight, I am speaking on divine path to recovery. You lost something. Something was taken away from you that God gave you. The first question I felt like asking, answering tonight is what happened that you lost out? What happened that glory was exchanged for shame? What happened that power gave way to weakness? What happened that a prayer giant has become a great player? What happened that a voice for God has become an empty noise maker? In 1 Samuel chapter 30, The Bible says in verse 1 And it came to pass The first thing I want to check tonight is What came to pass Before what you are passing through What came to pass That your life turned out to become what it is now What came to pass that is the reason why your head is bowed in shame? What happened that your night hours is full of tears, endless weeping? 
And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day. That the Amalekite had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city. And behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Verse 1 says, David returned on the third day. What happened in those two days of his absence was the reason why what God gave him, he lost it. Two days earlier, David was not at home. Two days earlier, David was not with his family. Two days earlier, David was on a journey that God never sent him. Two days earlier, David was where God never planned for him to be. And those two days, that he was absent from where he should be. The wicked one maximized and took advantage of it. Where did he go? He went to Akish, a king that was the enemy of God's people. He went to offer himself to join the camp of God's enemy to fight God's people. And while he made himself available and seemed to say, Satan, use me to fight God's people. Satan went through the back, took away his wives, took away his children, took away his properties, and went away with them. It looks to me as if David was on a vengeance mission. Since they don't want me, since they don't want, they want to kill me, let me join their enemies to fight them. And those two days in the wrong camp, those two days in the wrong company, those two days in the wrong fellowship, those two days in the wrong place brought him to the place of loss. Some of you are here. Your downward journey began when your company changed. Your downward journey began when your friends changed. Your downward journey began when you began to camp with God's enemies. A young man came to me. He said, excuse me, sir. I wanted to be rich. They told me 
I could be rich. I joined them. I experimented. I began to become rich. When I began to enjoy the wealth, they told me, go and bring your brother. We will need to kill your brother to increase your level of wealth. We will need to kill your brother to establish your wealth. He began to avoid them. He started running away from them. And guess what happened? As he was departing from them, their wealth was departing from him. After he lost everything Satan gave him, they now came for his life. If you are not giving us your brother, you will die. So he started running around looking for help. Beloved, in your craving to become wealthy, in your desire to become rich, in your pursuit to make money, which company did you join? Which friends did you make? What association did you become a part of? Can't you see? Rather than gain, you've been suffering losses. Rather than addition, you've been suffering reduction. Your life is upside down. Satan is a liar. Every promise they gave you, none of it has come to pass. There is a song that says, count your blessings, name them one by one. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. I needed to remind you, count your causes, count your troubles, name them one by one. You will see what the devil that you turned after has done to you. Your life is wounded. Your life is damaged. Your life is scattered. Your hope is shattered. Your destiny is upside down. Nothing is working for you. You made the wrong decision. Those few days, those few weeks, those few months, those few years that you gave to the devil brought you to the place of weeping. But tonight... Mercy will bring you recovery. That amen is not okay. That amen can be louder. Tonight, God's mercy will bring you to the place of total recovery. What have you lost? What path did you take that brought you to the place where your life became what it is now? There is the story of the two harlots that were brought before King Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3. Both of them were harlots. Both of them enjoy the mercy of God. I wish two of these sisters can just run to the altar for me now very quickly. Can you come very fast? Just two of you. Both of them were harlots. God is so merciful. God is is so gracious. God is so wonderful. Even though harlots, he blessed them. 
even though her lots, he gave them opportunity to conceive, to carry something. And for nine months, they carried the pregnancy and it didn't abort. Then at the end of nine months, the senior one gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. Three days later, the junior one also gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. Both of them, by the mercy of God, carried in their womb and carried in their hand. Both of them had opportunity to conceive something and to carry that thing. Follow me carefully. Then the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 3 one day while the junior one was sleeping. Several of you are here. What made you lose out is called sleep. What has reduced you to where you are is called sleep. What has made your life of fellowship, your life of communion with God, your life of service to the kingdom, to become crippled, is called sleep. Where, when you once watched, now you slept. So the Bible says, one night, the one that gave birth last overlaid her baby. She slept. She enjoyed the sleep. She turned and she overturned on the baby. And the baby suffocated to death. She overdid something. That caused the gift of God in her life to die. What mercy made available to her sleep killed. She slept up. She overlaid the baby and the baby died. Several of you are here. You carried burdens for God. You carried visions for the kingdom. You carried responsibilities for the kingdom. You were pregnant with something for God. But a point came in your life. There is something you began to overdo. And what you began to overdo undid what God was doing. She overlaid the child. What have you suddenly begun to overdo that is undoing what God was doing in your life? How come you suddenly began to overeat Suddenly you have developed a pot belly. The time you used to wake up and groan and travail and pray for hours. The time you used to wait on the Lord and seek his face 
and stand between the porch and the altar as a priest. You entered into a season of a craving to eat that you could not control. You began to overeat and overeat and overeat and overeat and you have become too heavy. Now, because of being pregnant with food, when you kneel down to pray, you sleep. The summary of your life now is over eating and over sleeping. Your prayer history with God cancelled. What bothered God that used to bother you don't bother you anymore. The burdens you used to carry for God, you used to carry for nations, you used to carry for families, you used to carry for servants of God, that burden has been killed by overeating and oversleeping. What did you begin to do over? Auntie, I needed to remind you that when you began to overthink, overthink about your age, overthink about your achievements academically, since when you began to overthink about your mates, about your colleagues, about your friends. When you began to overthink of those who didn't even serve God, who are not committed to God like you, that have gone far ahead of you. Look at how wearied you have become. Look at how worn out you have become. Look at how weak you have become. Your strength has left. Look at how empty you have become. How different you are now than you are three months ago. Than you are two years ago. What you could do for God with great ease, with so much struggle now, you can't achieve. A giant that has become a grasshopper. A victor that has turned a victim. Overthinking. You have overthought until your blood pressure at your age is now very high. Thinking and thinking and thinking and weeping and weeping and thinking and weeping and thinking. How dry life has become. And the pregnancy you once carried for God is aborted. And the baby you are nursing for God. The vision you are nursing for God. What God was helping you to do for him has died before your eyes. And your song is, the things I used to do, I do them no more. The good things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. No more strength. What have you begun to overdo that has undone what God used to do with you. Young man. Your pursuit for money. You want to make money at all cost. You are picking two, three, four jobs in a day. You jump from one to another one to another one. So that ends we meet. 
You are making money and spending your life. You are making money and fading away. You are making money and becoming irrelevant. You are making money and becoming useless to God. Overworking, overexhausted, and not available to your maker. God is almost brushed aside in your life. Sir, baby, dead. Vision, dead. Boarding, dead. Fire that you carried, dead. What are you doing over? Overplaying? Over talking? How do you know a man that has stopped praying? That man will start talking, talking, talking. When you stop talking with God, you start talking over with men. Have you come to a point in your life where people prefer to walk away from you? Because when you come, you engage them. Serious minded people can't hang around you. But I needed to remind you that was not the way your life was. You overlaid what was given to you and you killed it. But I wish she did what was right. She could have recovered back her son. I wish she cried out to God and said, Oh God, I overslept and overlaid my son. The son you gave me is dead. Oh God, restore life. Excuse me, sir. My greatest pain about you is that too many things have gone wrong in your life, but you prefer to pretend about it. You prefer to camouflage. You prefer to disguise. You can't pray on your own for 15 minutes anymore. But when we have 10 hours prayers, you will come, you will sit there, you will inform all your friends, I am going for 10 hours prayer. But what are you doing in those 10 hours? You are shaking your head, you are shaking your leg, but your heart is empty and dry. She didn't face God for recovery. I pray that no one will be like her here tonight. Come on, say better, amen. amen. Or you want to be like her? Look at what she did. She became a thief. She went and looked at the other sister and discovered that she also has overslept and could not protect what God gave her. Could not safeguard what God invested in her. Could not preserve what God has given to her. So when she came and discovered that she also was deep asleep, she collected her baby. And then brought the dead one and placed it before her. She was
was now carrying a living, a living baby that was not her baby. Several of you are carrying a vision that is not your God-given vision. Particularly in our nation, many have become copycats. What God gave to them originally, they have lost it. So they go to borrow from another. They go to collect from another. They go to receive from another. But that does not make it their own. She was carrying a living baby. But in the archives of heaven, her baby is dead. Sir, are you concerned about what heaven is saying about you? Are you concerned about what heaven knows about you? How come you are so bothered about making impression on people? Everyone around you is clapping for you except heaven. She also had problem of oversleeping. She slept until she lost her baby. Sir, where is the baby God gave you? Where is the gift God gave you? Where is the vision God gave you? Where is the burden God gave you? Where is the gift God gave you? Have you not slept until it has been exchanged? Have you not slept until it has been taken away from you? Have you not slept until you have lost it? She lost her baby. Then she woke up. When she woke up, she wanted to nurse that baby. Only to discover that the baby was dead. Then the Bible says, she looked at the baby closely. She re-examined the baby. Is this the baby God gave me? Upon careful examination, she realized that the baby she was now carrying was not the original baby. She had to seek help for recovery. And the first thing she had to do was to admit before the king, I slept. Oh king, I slept. If I were awake, I would not have lost what God gave me. If I were awake, what God gave to me will not have been exchanged. Oh, King of glory, I slept off. I lost consciousness. It was when I slept that my baby was exchanged. I pray for you tonight. May the Holy Spirit help you to come to a place of realization of what you have lost. Of the exchange that has taken place in your life. What you are bragging around with is not the original thing God gave you. What you are carrying around was not what you received from God. What you are bragging about was not what God invested in you. The real thing has been exchanged. 
Your real prayer life is gone. The real presence of God you stood for, that you once carried, is gone. You are a shadow of yourself. The original thing that was at work in you is lost. You slept. If tonight you will realize and you will cry out to God and tell him the truth about what befell you, I see it rising again. I see restoration take place for you. In the name of Jesus. She told the king the truth. I slept. That's when they took away my living son. And guess what happened? She recovered her living son back. You recover back your vision tonight. You recover back the burden that God placed in your heart. You recover back your assignment. Heaven will reconsider you one more time. In the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 13. Verse 25 says, A certain man went and planted good seed. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 25. Twenty-four says, "The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way." What did the man sow? Good seed. Who is that field? You. What did God sow in you? Good seed. God sowed his love in your heart. God sowed his fear in your heart. God sowed compassion in your heart. God sowed his anointing in your life. God invested his grace in your life. God sowed good health. But when you slept, an enemy came. The same place we are God sold. He came with his own investment. He came to solve tears. He came to solve trouble. He came to solve darkness. He came to solve wickedness. He came to solve sickness. Excuse me, sir. Look at all the kind of things that are growing up in your life. Look at all the kind of things that are beginning to show up in your life. I hear God saying, I'm not the one who planted that sickness in your body. I'm not the one who sowed sickness into your life so that you are perpetually hospitalized. It was good health that I sowed. I'm not the one 
who sold a craving for drugs, a craving for smoking marijuana in your heart. It was an enemy that planted doubt in your life to scatter your future. Young man, how come suddenly, except you smoke marijuana, you can't stay? How come suddenly, except you take some crack, except you take some tramadol, except you take some drugs, you are not yourself? Where did that addiction come from suddenly? Where did that addiction to pornography come from suddenly? It was when you slept, an enemy came and sold pornography. You used to wake up middle of the night to pray. Now you wake up to watch pornography. It was an enemy. They are sold this addiction to masturbation. It was an enemy who sold this wickedness of immorality in your life. On Friday, I was praying for a young man. He said to me, Sir, I don't know what came over me. I sleep with animals. I have sex with animals. I said, which animal? He said, goat. And sheep. God made you a human being. You are mating with a goat. Our generation has become so evil that people are, are conducting wedding even with dog now. Who created a desire in you to want to sleep with a man like yourself? You say you are homosexual. You say it's fun. Madam, you are a married woman who created that passion in you to be sleeping around with other women. You go to church, but you are a lesbian. You are addicted to it. I remember several years ago while I was still lecturing. We had a very smallish young lady in the choir of the FCS, Bene Polytechnic then. She's the smallest in the choir. You know, there are people that are very small in shape, but very loaded with devils inside. She is the smallest, so she will always be the one in the front. And those days, they used to carry file. She will carry her file, and then she'll be turning to the left and to the right, and so on. Nobody knew she was a lesbian. Satan rewarded her lesbianistic life by making her do a one-year course for four years. She will get admission, she will fail. She will go and get another course, another department, she will fail. And she was not ready to repent. Singing and doing her lesbianism. I'm afraid of you, sir. You're double dealing. You're double life. You're not here, you're not there. That of God, you seem to be perfect with it. That of the devil, you seem to be more perfect with it. You are at home on all sides. You can fornicate very well like a dog. And at the same time, sing very well like an angel. So when we see you perform on the two sides, we are confused. We don't know where to place you. Oh, 
Until that day, the Lord arrested her. She wept like a baby and confessed and said, Look, I've been a lesbian. I've initiated many in this fellowship to lesbianism. Only then did God have mercy on her to graduate. Some of you have signed to fail in life because when you deal with the devil, he will deal with you. If you have dealings with the devil as a good servant, as an obedient servant, after you have obeyed him very well and done his good wishes, he rewards you by dealing with you drastically and wickedly. I hope you are aware there is nothing good in the devil. So he has nothing good to offer those who serve him. He's a thief. He only comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Who planted that life in you? I prayed with a young man. He says, sir, I'm the youth leader in our church. I don't know what came over me. I became so addicted to pornography. I masturbate. And then I have defiled two members of my fellowship. Sir, who planted this thing in your life that you are now sleeping with your church members? Where did you get that anointing and that audacity from that you are defiling the daughters of Zion? I was preaching somewhere in Benue State and a young lady rushed at me as I came down from the altar and was weeping like a baby. What's your problem? She says, sir, I vowed to God that I'll keep my virginity, but it was my pastor that defiled me. He showed me that way of wickedness. And today I've slept with more than 10 men. Today I'm alive. As if all I'm alive for is fornication. It was my pastor that launched me into it. God will judge you, sir. Nobody may be able to talk to you. Nobody may be able to stop you. Nobody may be able to remove you. But I wish you know that you don't even have a place over there. Many will say to me, in your name, his name is credit worthy. Even if a goat were to use that name, it will work for it. Not because of the goat, but because of the name. In your name, we casted out devils. We healed the sick. We did many miracles. You see, but I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Whatever you are doing for God plus iniquity ends you outside the kingdom. So the Bible says, in verse 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. All the tears will be gathered out of the kingdom. All that offend, all that are stumbling blocks, all that make people commit sin, all that help people to commit sin, all that seduce people to sin will be removed out of the kingdom. And those who do iniquity. Sir, the tears, the devil planted in your life is so that heaven can elude you. 
What is a man profited if he shall gain this whole world and lose his own soul? Which path did you take? Were you like David? You joined the wrong company. You joined the company of Yahoo Plus. You joined the company of one cult or the other. Look at how your life has been damaged. Perhaps in the process you lost your father, you lost your mother, you lost your brother and your life is in danger. Perhaps like the two prostitutes, there was something that you overlaid, you overdid. Your life began to go in the wrong direction. Over. You used to overpray, now you overplay. You used to overteach, now you overthink. You used to over travel, now you over gossip. You used to over preach, committed to soul winning, now you are committed as a busy body in other men's affairs. Satan has re, ha, exchanged the essence of the right things you do in life and has given you fake, useless things. David wept. Those that were with him wept. But just weeping is not the answer. He now called for the priest. And said, please, help me ask God. Do I pursue them? Will I overtake them? Is there still possibility of recovery? Is my fate sealed? Is this the way my life will remain? Without my wives, without my children, without my properties? Is that how my life will remain naked? Or is there mercy of recovery for me? And God answered. I wish that when things scatter for you, you learn to return back to your maker. Your maker can remake you. Your maker can repackage you. No matter how dashed, how battered, how shattered, how scattered you have become in life. The altar of your life can repackage you again. He can remold you. He is the potter. But rather than turn to God, many times we turn to false prophets. False prophets that will complicate our situation. Some of us are servants, slaves. Anywhere there is a prophet that will prophesy and tell you the color of the pants you are wearing. You would like to go there quickly so that he can tell you your future. But my pain is what has the color of your pan to do with the wreck of your life. Men are deceived. They prefer to seek mortal deceiving men than to seek God. But David turned to God and he got the right answer. Follow me carefully because I'll be praying very soon. How many of you are ready for recovery tonight? Wave the hand very well. How many of you are yearning for recovery tonight? You see, the person you cannot deceive is yourself. And it is wisdom not to deceive yourself. It is wisdom to seek God aright. 
So God told him, Go! You recover all. Pursue them. You will overtake them. You recover all without fail. Listen to me carefully. Ben, can I have six young men come to me here quickly? Six young men, very fast. Six, very fast. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Are you still there? Are you hearing me? Are you following me? Are you understanding me? God told him. Pursue. You will surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. But God kept an information away from them. What is that information? Which route did the enemy take? If you pursue somebody to Boko Roundabout, there are three possibilities there. The person may decide to go right or to go road, right? Left, Lafia Road, right? Straight, Boko Road. So if the person took right and you take straight, will you ever get the person? Talk to me. Never. That vital information of the route the enemy took, God hid with the enemy. Ah. Uh. So they started coming. They started coming. They were coming. They were coming. They were trying. They were coming. They were coming. And then they came to a place called Brook Berso. Brook Berso. Berso means cool, cool or cold. In their search for recovery, they made progress until they came to a place where 200 of them became cold. Their zeal became cold. Their strength became cold. Their passion became cold. And they said, Oh God David, we are not going beyond here. We are tired. We don't want recovery again. We are tired. You want to recover, you continue to recover. I don't recover anything again. We have accepted our faith. They became cold. Can I pray for you? Your journey tonight will not end at best. Oh! Kai, that amen can be better than that. Your journey tonight will not end at best. Oh! You will not become cold. Your cry will be fervent. You will not hold your peace until heaven smiles at you again. Then, 400 of them were still beating around the bush. Beating around the bush. They didn't know where to go to. Then suddenly, in their search, they saw a man on the ground. At the point of death. Actually, one of the enemies. Can I ask you, sir? Somebody came and carried away your wife and children. And then you were looking for him. And you got one of his. What will you do? Talk to me. Shout louder. Huh? Say louder now. Are you afraid? Finish him. 
How many of you say finish him? Wave the hand very well. Finish him. Kill him. I think that's what you mean. But if that is what you mean, do like this. Let me see. Huh. Excuse me. Oh. The route to the place of fulfillment of prophecy and to the place of recovery, the secret, the information, God hid it with the enemy. If they had killed the enemy, they will have lost the connection. There is a genuine prophecy not fulfilled because love that is the bridge between your prophecy and its fulfillment was missing. But read your Bible very well. What did they do? Huh? They took him up. They gave him food. He ate. Who did they give food? Talk to me now. Huh. They gave him water to drink. Who did they give water to? Talk to me now. They brought him cake to eat. Who did they give cake? Then they brought him juice to wash down. Then the man revived. And that enemy became the guide. And they got to the place of recovery. And the Bible says... They recovered how many? Say it louder. Say it louder. Say it louder. When Esther fasted and prayed for three days and three nights, guess what the Holy Spirit said to her to do? To throw a banquet for who? Huh? High enemy. Some enemies you kill may carry the table that is meant for you. Who gave Mordecai the sumptuous table that he enjoyed? Huh? Hey, man. He was the one who told the king, King, let the man ride in your limousine. Nobody else could suggest that. Let him wear your crown. Let him wear your regalia. Let somebody be trekking ahead of him. And the king said, all you said approved. Executor, you, beneficiary, Mordecai. Was this enemy useful or not? But you see, as to the matter of settling him or not settling him, the one that has the authority to kill and make a life, after using him, the gallow he prepared, he was hanged on it. He settled him there. Tonight, I have come to tell you, recovery is possible. All that you have lost, you can recover all. The vision you have lost. The body you have lost. You can recover all. All the tears that have been sown into your life. Tonight they shall all be uprooted in the name of Jesus. 
Look at how suddenly you have become a liar. Suddenly you have become a drunkard. You know what they are doing is evil. You do it secretly. Suddenly you have become addicted to drugs. Addicted to smoking. Suddenly you have become like a prostitute. You can't say no to men. If you don't sleep with them, then the day has not started. Don't wait until when God will uproot you out of the kingdom. Tonight, give him the opportunity to uproot all these tears out of your life. You are his field. And that is the first thing I see God wanting to do tonight. He wants to uproot every tears in your life. He wants to uproot every rubbish in your life. He wants to uproot every evil habit Every evil lifestyle in your life that has made you a mixed up. Every tree that my father has not planted shall be. I want to ask you tonight how many of you are ready and saying, Lord, all the tears that have grown in my life that want to make me miss the kingdom, I permit you or put it out of my life. Can I see your hand up? If you are putting the hand up, put it up very well. You know yourself very well. I know there are tears in my life. Planted in my life. I know an enemy has done this. But I'm not going to keep it because I don't belong to the enemy. I want God to uproot all this wickedness, all these tears out of my life. Put that hand up very well. Because I want to pray for you. As you put the hand up, stand up on your feet. Don't look at anybody. Stand up on your feet. Don't look at anybody. Stand for yourself. This is a destiny determining moment. I know my life is full of tears. I know there are things that have grown in my life. I know it's not God. It's not God who planted them. They don't reflect God. They don't show God. They are not from God. An enemy has done these things in my life to destroy my destiny. But tonight, I want to give God the opportunity to uproot all these tears out of my life. If that is why you are standing... Come forward here. I'd like to pray for you quickly. Don't sit back. Walk out very fast. We have no time. Walk out very fast. We have no time. I am tired of the tears. I am tired of the rubbish in my life. I am tired of the rottenness in my life. I'm tired of deceiving myself. I'm tired of pretending to be who I am not. You and heaven know you are a prostitute. You and heaven knows you are a drug addict. You and heaven knows you are a murderer full of abortion. But you prefer to pretend. Come boldly to God tonight and say, Lord, enough is enough. The field of my life is no more available to the enemy. Everything they have planted, Lord, I have come. The time has come for you to root them out. If you have moved from your seat and you have come to this altar, it will be a tragedy for you not to pray. to be a tragedy for you not to cry out to God for something meaningful to happen to your life. It will be a tragedy for you to come with tears and go back with tears. If you are coming, come very fast. If you have come, open your mouth and talk to God. Talk to God in the language you understand. Tell God the truth about yourself. What are the tears in your life? What is the rubbish your life has accommodated? Tell 
tell God the truth about yourself. Tell God the terrible name Satan has given you. They call you a lesbian. And you are proud of it. Hellfire is waiting for you. Talk to God. Be sincere with him. Tell him the truth. Then second harlot told the king the truth. I slept. I slept. I slept. It was not part of me. I slept. Lord, have mercy on me. I become a terrible liar. I become a thief. You can do anything for money. Sleep with your grandfather for money. Sleep with your elder brother, elder sister for money. Lord, I am tired. Lord, I am tired. Oh Lord, forgive me. All the mess in my life, forgive me. Oh Lord, rescue me. Lord, rescue me. Rescue me, Lord. Uproot out of my life. Hypocrisy. Uproot out of my life. The rotten life I am living. Lord, I want to be free. To serve only you. No servant can serve two masters. Lord, I'm tired of being shared. I'm tired of being divided. I'm not here, I'm not there. Lord, I am sorry. In Jesus' precious name we pray. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, oh. 
I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, oh. Are you truly sorry? You are married and you are sleeping around like a goat. I am sorry. You want contract. You can't keep your marital vow. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Forgive me. My father. For the abortions I am. Forgive me. Sleeping around with people's husbands. Forgive me, oh. I am sorry, oh. My father. Jehovah. Agabaidu. I am sorry, oh. Sorry. I'm sorry, oh. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, I am sorry, Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I return back to you. I'm sorry. On the field of my life, so much tears. So much wickedness. So much evil have been sown by the enemy. Tonight, I take responsibility. I am sorry. Forgive me all my sins. Forgive me all my evil doings. Wash me clean by the blood you shed for me. Take the stony heart away. Take uproot out of my heart. Out of my life. All the enemy planted. Uproot completely. Uproot completely. Uproot completely. Let no evil be left. Free my heart completely. Free my life completely. And tonight, Lord, I give the throne of my heart to the one to whom it is due. To my Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, sit on the throne of my heart. Sit on the throne of my life. Take charge. Take control. I want to live for you. Only for you. For the rest of my life. Take total control. Take perfect control. I am yours. All together yours. From now and forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me mercy. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for helping me to answer this call that will change my life forever. I am grateful. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. In my life, come and take your place. In my life, come and take your place. You are sitting at the back there. Like that harlot. Over sleep, over eating, over thinking, over something, killed what God gave to you. You are not at this altar yet. Your vision dead. Your fire quenched. Your altar gone. And very sincerely tonight, you're saying, Lord, restore what I have lost. You are back there. You are not at the altar yet. Can you quickly stand up and stretch your two hands up to heaven? You are not at the altar yet. You are back there. Stand on your feet and stretch your two hands up to God. Your heart is yearning for restoration. Can you quickly come to my right hand side somewhere here? Those of you in the front, we are going to pray for you now. If you are standing on that account, walk out very fast to my right hand side here. Quickly, help will come to you. Stay where you are. In my life, come and take your place. Come and take. Come and take. Uncle Tom, please. Uncle Tauja, please. Oh, Lord. Come and take your place in my life. Come and take your place. Come and take your place, oh Lord. Come and take. Your place, oh Lord, in my life, in my life, come and take your place in my life, come and take your place, come and take. for you the recovery is immediate and total
first thing God wants to own for you to enjoy your freedom. The first thing God wants to own is you. The first thing God wants to own is you. Therefore, I'm going to pray a short prayer for you. I'm sure you stepped out because you believe the word that was spoken. Do you believe it? Do you believe the word? Do you believe it has power to change your life? And to make you a different person in every area? And that the things God has given to you, they will never die. As I pray with you now, it's not tomorrow that God is changing your life. It's right now. Can I hear you say God is changing me? Right now. I'm living here a different person. And I will never go back anymore. Let me hear you say in Jesus name. Say it louder in Jesus name. Say it louder in Jesus' name. And can you say amen? amen? Lift up your two hands to God and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my all to you. I will never go back. I will only go forward. Take everything that concerns me and make it your own. I will follow you. I will serve you. I will walk with you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Because I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Because I believe. And it shall be so. so. Say amen. Amen. Father, thank you for all these lives. Thank you for their decision to step out by faith unto your holy presence. I ask, O God, that the blood of Jesus that paid for their troubles, let that blood sweep away all their troubles. Let the blood wash away all their iniquities. Amen. Let the blood give each of them a new life. Amen. And let the power of God that does not stop flow through their vessels. Amen. Whatever they were engaged in that followed them here, break it from their lives. Amen. And set every one of them free. Amen. Whatever the enemy is waiting on the road to do, Break it afar off. And let their liberty come unto all. Give each of these people a testimony. And grant that one day the world will hear their story. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. Let me hear you say it is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. Now listen. I didn't know our time has gone. I'll have been happier to come down and lay hands on all of you. But tomorrow morning, join us at the embassy. What is the time again? Huh? 8 a.m. All of you, I want to see you there. 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. And we'll have more time. Several of you may be going very far. There is no wisdom in keeping you beyond this. And this is the first night. Are you hearing me? You just sing this song with me just two times. And then... There are people who would like to take informations about you. Okay.
that side. You just sing the song with me two times. Don't go back to your seat. Just go this way. And then what time are we singing tomorrow morning? Yeah. Say it louder. Yeah. How many of you are happy to make it? Yes. Let nothing stop you. Miss whatever. I'm there. This is the song I want you to sing. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side. No wonder from the pathway if thou will be my guide. Amen. So sing the song. Just go this way. Can you be going this way? Oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not gather but to if thou art by my side, no wonder from the pathway, if thou 